guys, I'm Nini. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to start and finish your alpha pattern keychains. I will not be showing you guys how to make the actual alpha pattern part of the keychain in this video. I know Masternotes has a great tutorial on her channel called the Flat Alpha Technique, which is the technique that I use. In this video, I will be showing you guys how to start your keychains and two different ways you can end them. I will also show you guys a tip that I have for getting a fluffier tassel at the end. So without further ado, let's get into the tutorial. So to start off, I got these D-ring swivel keychain hooks on Amazon. They came in a pack of 60 for $10. The inside ring is 3 quarters of an inch long. I think they're good quality, and if you are interested in purchasing these exact ones, I will be leaving the link in the description below. The first step of making these keychains is putting the base strings onto the hook. I usually make keychains that are 20 to 25 rows long, and I have found that using base strings that are about 5 inches works the best. Now obviously, if you are making a pattern with more than 25 rows, you would need longer base strings. When you cut your base strings, you actually have to make them twice as long because you do fold them in half to put them onto the keyring. For this pattern that I'm starting, I need 17 base strings, so I have 8 strings that are 10 inches long here, and I have one extra that is 5 inches because there is an odd number of base strings. So to attach your base strings onto your keychain hook, you are going to make a lark's head knot. You are going to fold your base string in half and take the end with the loop and put the loop through the hook. And then you pull the loop through, and you go in between the loop, and you grab the two strings that are in front and you pull them into the loop. I'll show you guys that one more time. You fold your base string in half like this, you grab the end with the loop and you put the loop through the keychain hook, you grab it on the other side, you stick your fingers through the loop and grab the two pieces that are now in front and you pull them through like this. So when you're done putting all your base strings onto the hook, it should look something like this. I have found that using 16 to 18 base strings on these keychains, which are 3 quarters of an inch wide, fit nicely. You can obviously use more than 18, they might just bulge out the sides a little. This pattern does have 17 base strings though, which is why I have my leftover piece right here. With this extra piece, I am simply going to tie it onto the keychain right in the middle so it doesn't stick out. So I just tied that one string in the middle, you can see it right here, and there is a string sticking out in the back, but I will be covering that later, so I'm not worried about it. And that is basically it for starting your keychain, you can now go into making your pattern. So the first end style I will be teaching you guys is the one on these cherry keychains, it's more flat looking, and the second style is the one on the Snoopy keychain, it comes into a triangle more and you can see the base strings. So I'm going to be using this cute little cat keychain to show you guys how to make the flatter end. I've tucked my leading string behind my base strings right here, and the first step is to separate your base strings in half and ignore one half for now. You are going to take the second to last base string and make a forward knot onto the very last base string on the right side. Once you have done that, you are going to take the third to last base string and make a forward knot on these two strings at the end. You are then going to repeat the process and make a forward knot with the next base string onto the group of strings that are on the end. You are going to keep making forward knots until you reach the middle. On this side, you should now have something that looks like this. Moving on to the next side, you are essentially going to do the exact same thing, but instead of doing forward knots, you are going to do backward knots. So take the base string that is second to last on the left and make a backwards knot on the very end base string. Do the same with the third to last string and make a backward knot on the two strings that are now at the end. You are going to repeat this process just like on the other side until you reach the middle. Once you're finished, it should look something like this. Now you're going to take the string that you just knotted with on top of the left bundle and make a forward knot with it onto the right bundle. Next up, you're going to do the same thing on the other side. You take the topmost string on the right bundle and make a backward knot onto the left bundle.
Next up, I will be making the little end tie. Take a piece of thread, it doesn't have to be very long, slide it under your keychain, and simply tie it around where the strings meet in the middle. After tying it, I like to wrap the thread around a few times. Once you've wrapped it around, tie it together one more time. Now what you do with these thread ends is totally up to you. I know some people like to trim them right here and keep them with the tassel, but I personally like to cut them off all the way. I will usually cut them pretty close to the edge like this. And then I use some clear nail polish to make these little ends stick on. After putting on the nail polish, I just sit here and let it dry. So it's dried and now I'm going to trim my tassel. I usually make mine about an inch long, but it really is personal preference. And now a trick that I have for getting a fluffier looking tassel that looks like this. You are going to take a safety pin or needle or something pointy like this and you are just going to take the pointy end and brush it through the tassel like this. And you're going to see that the threads are fraying and making a fluffier looking tassel. And you should end up with a tassel that looks something like this. Now I will be teaching you guys how to make this more triangle looking end. It is very similar to the technique that I showed you guys before. You are going to start by splitting your strings in half and ignoring the left side. You are going to take the second to last string and make a forward backward knot onto the very last string. You are going to repeat that with the third to last string, make a forward backward knot onto these two end strings. And you are going to repeat that process until you reach the middle. When you reach the middle, you're basically going to do the same thing on the other side, but use backward forward knots instead of forward backward. So take your second to last string on the right and do a backward forward knot onto the very last string. Again, take your third to last string and make a backward forward knot onto these two. And you keep doing that until you reach the middle. When you're finished, you should have a triangle shape that looks something like this. And to finish it, you are going to use the same steps that we used for this keychain. I also like to add felt to the back of my keychains. I just think it gives it a more cleaner look compared to something like this. I also like the pop of color it gives, and it's also a good way to hide extra strings in the back like these. I bought all of these different colors of felt from Hobby Lobby, and I cut them into the right shape for the backs of my keychains, and then I glue them on with this felt glue that I also bought from Hobby Lobby. So I just finished these two little cat keychains and I think they turned out really nice. I'm really happy with them. I also decided to do a gray and orange back for these keychains so they would match the cats in the front. Now there are obviously other ways you can finish your keychains. I've seen people tie all of their base strings together in one knot or section off their base strings and tie those into smaller knots. These are just two techniques that I like to do and I hope you guys enjoy them too. Comment down below if you like the more triangle looking finish or the flatter finish. If you guys have any questions on the techniques I showed you guys today, definitely comment down below. I would love to answer them. And that pretty much wraps up everything I was going to show you guys today. If you want to see some of the other keychains I've made, you can definitely check out my Instagram at Nini Knots. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope these techniques help you in making your own keychains. Feel free to let me know down below if this tutorial was helpful. If you use any of the techniques that you've learned in this video and you decide to post your creation on Instagram, definitely tag me at Nini Knots. I would love to see what you guys make. All of the keychains featured in this video are currently for sale on my Etsy shop. I will be leaving the link down below if you're interested. And I will also be leaving the pattern numbers to these keychains in the description below if you get inspired to make any of them. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this tutorial was helpful and I will see you guys in the next video. 
Hey guys, so I'm. Uh, my hand looks really weird. Uh, Stop I'm laughing at me. Okay, okay. Say it one more time. <laughs> I'm like a broken record. The first step to making these key, this keychains, this keychains. The first step to making these keychains. <laughs>